Hello guys, this video will explain in detail all aspects of quantitative analysis and quantitative trading. You will also get acquainted with terms and historical data. You will learn how quantitative trading works, what software is used and what quant trading strategies are most profitable. So let's start with what is quantitative trading. So quantitative trading, also called quant trading, involves the use of computer algorithms and software. So quant trading is widely used at individual and also institutional levels of high frequency algorithmic arbitrage and automated trading. So a quant trader, unlike ordinary traders, hardly participates in the trading process. And quant trading involves activities related to data science and programming. So simply put, a quantitative trader should determine the statistical patterns and the price movement patterns of a trading instrument. And this data will then be used in writing software for automated trading. So an example of a quant strategy is weather forecasts. So meteorologists in their work are guided by quantitative data on atmospheric pressure, temperature and wind speed. So given the laws of weather change, a meteorologist can make a relatively accurate forecast based on this information. And a quant trader works the same way. So now uh, let's talk about uh, briefly about the history. So in 1973, Fisher Black and Myron Scholes first published the option pricing model formula. And so the key point in determining the option value was the expected volatility, which can be calculated mathematically. And so in 1997, the Black Scholes model won the Nobel Prize in economics, radically changing the approach to developing trading strategies. And so the yield of 75 to 80% of transactions based on mathematical analysis proved the profitability of this technique and quantitative equity trading was adopted by market makers and investment banks. Now, let's talk about why should we use uh, quantitative trading? Uh, well, there are a couple of advantages, like for example, first one, scalability, where traders usually use no more than five to seven analytical tools simultaneously, including the simplest ones, such as a trend following or moving average crossovers. High, freq high frequency trading can hypothetically include an unlimited number of strategies and inputs uh, from classical mathematical methods of analysis to the study of behavioral biases. Next is the fact that it gives unlimited opportunities for diversification because simply quantitative analysis is suitable for any market. Next point is a very low degree of error. Statistical arbitrage involves the use of highly accurate data. And so to recognize an algorithmic pattern and build a prediction based on it, a computer operates with hundreds of different parameters with an accuracy up to 10,000 and sometimes even higher. So due to this, it is possible to reduce the calculations error to a bare minimum. Lastly, we could add a decision making speed. And so high performance computing enables fast trading decisions. This is especially important when trading on the shorter timeframes. And I don't want to be a person who will spread bad news, but with the growing popularity of exchange trading, the efficiency of the classic or manual, we could say, if you want to call it market analysis, is steadily declining. Therefore, many hedge funds have long since moved from classical trading to quantitative trading. And that is why we as traders should at least try to move into this kind of environment. So in terms of market conditions in quantitative trading, it is necessary to run algorithms on different trading instruments. Otherwise, it will not be possible to achieve the target profit. And so when choosing assets, it is worth checking their correlation coefficient with each other. So for some strategies, the correlation should be as close to zero as possible, while others, on the contrary, are designed to work in conditions of a clear correlation. And of course, quantitative analysis methods are not yet perfect enough to be applied to all types of markets and assets. But we need to mention that those strategies 
work best on highly liquid instruments. So for example, in quant trading stocks, the profitability is almost always higher than when trading using traditional strategies. However, quant trading in Forex is used less frequently. But another promising area is high risk markets such as cryptocurrencies. And so quant trader tools, once configured, provide optimal capital allocation, which means they better control maximum drawdowns and calculate risks. Okay, now let's go to the core of the issue. So how does it work in practice? So quantitative uh, trading is based on a mathematical analysis. Projection, mo projection models are created and used as part of a quant trading strategy. And so programming knowledge is required to develop, test and configure the software. So we have C++, C Sharp, MATLAB, R and Python languages which are used to write quantitative algorithms. And so the most advanced algorithms are built on the basis of self-learning neural networks. And so the capabilities, capabilities of which are beyond the scope of standard algorithms. Almost all quantitative trading methods work on the same principle. Firstly, a particular time interval is selected. Then a data set is selected. For example, open close price, drawdowns, high lows, and so on. Next, depending on the data obtained, algorithmic methods of market research are selected. And then the selected time period is analyzed according to the chosen criteria and based on the analysis, trading decisions are made. So let's have a look at a simple example. Supposing the price of a share at the opening of a trading was $5. At 12 a.m. it rose to $5.82. At 6 p.m. to $6.52. And after the close of intraday positions, the price fell to $4.62. At the pivot points, the MACD indicator showed overbought and oversold conditions. Therefore, the simplest mathematical model can include the following data. So we will have the current time, current bid ask prices, opening price, high low price, current price direction, and MACD readings or MACD readings if you prefer. So with this, such a small uh, set of data, a trader can achieve, achieve quite good trading results using traditional strategies. But imagine that instead of seven parameters, 30 or 50 parameters will be taken into account. Such an analysis is beyond human capabilities, especially if you need to make trading decisions quickly. And so high frequency trading allows you to analyze dozens or hundreds of parameters in a fraction of a second. It automatically finds the patterns, selects effective methods of analysis and builds a probabilistic forecasts based on them. That is, a quantitative trader does not delve into separate market indicators, but immediately deals with a ready-made mathematical model, which already takes into account market entry points, stops, price movement areas, sideways trend spreads, the possibility of minimizing transactions, etc. So one of the real life examples and that we can talk about is Medallion Fund, which is one of the oldest funds using quantitative trading strategies. It was founded by the famous American mathematician and investor James or other called Jim Harris Simmons, known as the Quant King. And so during its experience, the fund has shown negative returns only once. At the same time, the average annual profitability of Medallion outstrips even the hedge funds of George Soros, Peter Lynch, Warren Buffett and other famous investors. No one knows what quantitative trading system is used in Medallion, of course, but some information is still there. Every day, the fund's algorithms open hundreds of thousands of trades. Most strategies are market neutral. That is, they work both when the market rises and when it falls. And so the average ratio of a profitable strategy is contrary to expectations, barely exceeds 50%. Experts call Medallion the blackest box in the field of money management as no one has been able to unravel the secrets of James Simmons. A quantitative trading strategy is a complete system for identifying and implementing trading opportunities. Conventionally, 
it can be divided into four subsystems. So we have first the strategy identification, which is searching for a trading system, analyzing the features of trading operations. Then we have strategy backtesting. So it is testing the algorithm on historical data, profitability analysis and elimination of system errors to lower the risk of losing money. Then we have third point, which is execution system. And it synchronized the algorithm with the trading software and a brokerage account. Fourth point, we have risk management, which is of course the capital allocation, accounting for minimizing transaction costs, bets, risks, etc. So now finally, let us discuss some basic strategies of quant trading. So we can define six common trading strategies, uh, starting with uh, first the mean reversion, trend following, statistical arbitrage, then we have algorithmic pattern recognition, behavioral bias recognition and ETF rule trading. But in this video, let's go into detail of two of them to not make uh, the video too long. So first let's check mean reversion, which will be the first one, uh, first quantitative strategy that we will delve into. So the main idea is uh, that the price often returns to its average values. So in the simplest version, they are calculated using a moving average. And so, which is what the quant trading strategy is based on. Entry conditions are when the price deviates from the moving average, then the market reverses towards the moving average confirmed by the MACD indicator. Next, the position is opened in the moving average direction and is closed when the price reaches the moving average. And so in this chart, the blue line marks the short entry when the big red candle closes. And so the entry point is confirmed with the overbought state indicated by the RSI indicator. The red line marks the stop loss that is set at the local high. The green line marks the profit at the pivot point close to the exponential moving average. So now, next, let's check statistical arbitrage. So trading through statistical arbitrage involves making a profit by buying one instrument and selling another that correlates with the first one. So this quantitative strategy involves measuring the trading spread between assets. As soon as it becomes wider than the average, opposite, trading, opposite positions are opened. So a long position is opened for an asset with a lower price. At the same time, a sell trade is entered with the second instrument. And so positions are closed when the spread narrows to the average. And so here we have example of correlated currency pairs, Euro USD and USD CHF. So when the spread deviates from the average value, open two opposite positions marked with, which are marked with blue lines here on this chart. Green lines are the moments of a profit taking under the terms of trading strategy. That is when the spread value returns to its average, which is the purple area in the chart. So guys, as for final thoughts, I think quantitative trading is another attempt to create a perfect trading system that could provide a stable income despite the growing competition among traders. And I must say the most advanced quantitative strategies have come close to this dream. For example, the case of the medallion fund shows that with the help of quant trading, one can make a sustainable profit for decades. However, one should not see quantitative trading strategies as a 100% guarantee of profit. There are very few really professional quantitative traders in the market. The point here is not so much the complexity of strategies, but the ability to use complex statistical and mathematical tools with the help of powerful trading stations. And so guys, on that note, I will leave you here. Remember to check our other productions, leave a like under this video, of course, if you like this content and yeah, follow for more. I'll see you in the next one. Take care and goodbye.